But as you watch this legislation voted in today and, and the debate uh, about what's going to happen to it, it also highlights an essential question about how democracy functions, how legislation is made, and fundamentally what we want our political representatives to do. Essentially, we want them to evaluate arguments and assess costs and benefits, listen to different interests and constituents, and ultimately make good faith judgments about what they think is best for the country and for the people they represent. What we don't want our representatives doing is what happens too much in Washington, frankly, which is siding with the folks who write the biggest checks. And that is particularly true if the politician in question is in desperate financial straits and willing to do anything, including selling off their own political platform to any person willing to pony up the most cash. Which brings us to the most prominent Republican opponent of today's bill, one Donald Trump. Now, the ex-president, we should note, is a bit of a late convert to the pro-TikTok cause. Here he is, as president, four years ago, threatening to ban the app outright. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. We may be doing some other things or a couple of options. But a lot of things are happening, so we'll see what happens. But we are looking at a lot of alternatives with respect to TikTok. In fact, Trump tried to go through with that ban, although ultimately it fell apart. It was thrown out by the courts. But here he is, two days ago, in the run-up to, to this vote, two days ago, on CNBC, announcing opposing a ban. Frankly, there are a lot of people on TikTok that love it. There are a lot of young kids on TikTok who, who will go crazy without it. There are a lot of uh, users. There's, you know, a lot of good, and there's a lot of bad with TikTok. But... The thing I don't like is that without TikTok, you can make Facebook bigger. And I consider Facebook to be an enemy of the people. Right. You may remember Facebook banned him. Trump has a vendetta against Mark Zuckerberg, who he calls Zucker schmuck. Um, so the TikTok flip-flop that you just saw from Trump, it didn't come out of nowhere. It wasn't like he was sitting there like, oh, let's look at the pros and cons articles. Someone get this all together to me. No, get this. It was just like two weeks ago when this vote was scheduled, everyone knew it was going to happen, that a Republican mega donor, that guy named Jeff Yass, made the pilgrimage down to Mar-a-Lago to kiss Trump's ring. And it was particularly notable because Yass has previously been something of a Trump skeptic. It's also notable because Yass co-founded a trading firm that owns 15% of TikTok's parent company and reportedly has a personal stake in the company worth tens of billions of dollars. Jeff Yass, who's an enormous Republican donor, the leading donor in 2024 so far, has a lot riding on this decision. Okay? Well, you don't have to be a genius to put two and two together here. Yass visits, Trump announces he now poses the ban. In fact, even Steve Bannon figured it out, taking to a fringe right-wing social platform to share an article about Trump's flip-flop with the caption, quote, simply, Yass coin. And thanks to Mitch McConnell and the John Roberts Supreme Court, we effectively have no real, actual, meaningful campaign finance regulations left in this country, which means that someone like Jeff Yass, again, who, who has, like, billions of dollars on the line, can write a billion-dollar check to Donald Trump's super PAC if he's so inclined. Might get a good return on that investment. So it should come as no surprise that the ex-president left that meeting with Yass with a newfound appreciation for TikTok. And here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a one-off. I am telling you right now, this is now the way policy is going to get formed in this campaign and in a possible second Trump term, especially when the man is in acute financial distress and does not have the liquidity to pony up the $600 million he owes in legal penalties. He is also way behind in fundraising, partly because he and his operation have already cannibalized huge amounts of small dollar donations already in order to pay off tens of millions of dollars in legal fees. Legal fees, I should add, that aren't going anywhere and are probably going to get worse. A core part of Trump's appeal back in 2016 was this lie. It was a shtick uh, that his personal wealth, I'm a big billionaire, would allow him to self-fund his campaign and make him immune to outside influence. Hillary Clinton's campaign is funded by Wall Street and hedge fund managers. My campaign is powered by my money. I'm self-funding. So I'm not controlled by all these people that control Cruz, that control Hillary. Crooked, crooked, crooked Hillary. I have 
tens and tens of millions of dollars. Nobody else does. I put my own money into this. Okay, that was always a lie. He raised huge sums of money from donors uh, in, in that campaign. But right now, he is more beholden to donors and the donor class than ever before. He owes hundreds of millions of dollars. Of, of dollars. The small donations that they've been just cranking, right, are, are showing signs of running dry. There's only so many $10 donations you can get out of people. And so, name your price, billionaires. Donald Trump's political positions are for sale. We've seen it with TikTok and his flip-flopping on cutting things like Medicare and Social Security, uh, another unpopular position he once opposed but now seems open to because, again, it is what extremely wealthy donors want to see. The ex-president is strapped for cash, and the Republican platform and America's governing agenda, perhaps, is up for auction to the highest bidder.